Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 and today I present the awesome beast which is the B-36. Its remarkable 70 meter wingspan led the bomber to be dubbed the Aluminum Overcast by its manufacturer Conveyor and it's unfortunate that I couldn't get the appropriate shiny metallic texture for this replica. But we do have the B-36's signature 6 Pratt & Whitney Wasp major propeller engines and 4 GE J47 jet engines. I made sure to create the configurations for those and uh, so we do have the right engines. The Wasp major boasted 3,800 horsepower with a 71,000 cc displacement and it was also used in the Spruce Goose. The GE J47s were the engines from the F86 Sabre and also saw use on the B47 Stratojet. And so here we are on takeoff. I did configure the flaps and uh, we, <laughs> we have an interesting time getting off the runway. Actually, I had to scale this up a little bit so it's actually slightly larger than the actual B36 and that's because of the body diameter. I had to have the body a certain diameter in order to fit the cockpit up front and as a result the wingspan also had to be a little bit longer than the 70 meter wingspan that the B36 is supposed to have. The engines are correct, the mass, the dry mass is correct. We we're only carrying half our uh, potential full load here so this is at half load uh, but if we had any more of a load we would probably need more runway. Um, I don't know why that is. Again mass is correct, power is correct and we actually have a little bit more wingspan though also a little bit more drag but yeah the runway was a little bit tight there but we did get off of it and it's climbing barely the B-36 was the first American intercontinental strategic bomber meaning that it could carry nuclear weapons with a range of 10,000 miles without refueling however to cover this distance it would take either 40 hours on the propeller engines alone or 24 hours using the jets as well so it's 250 miles an hour with the propeller engines or 400 miles an hour with the jets. Training missions on the B-36 were really long. More interesting than its nuclear weapons capability was the time it carried a nuclear reactor. The NB-36H had a reactor producing 3 megawatts and was cooled by air. But it was not connected to any systems. It was just to test the lead shielding to make sure it wasn't a danger to the crew. Except in the case of an accident or an attack, of course, uh, at which point all bets were off. The nuclear NB-36H flew 47 flights and ran the reactor for 89 hours in flight. That was just one peculiarity of the B-36 program. Another peculiarity was that the prototype had single wheel landing gear, single wheel main landing gear, instead of what you'll see here, four wheels on the main landing gear. And that single wheel landing gear had tires that were nine feet tall, but they put too much pressure on the runways so they couldn't keep them. It's probably better that they didn't. I think the, the four tires on each landing gear, probably for the best. The empty mass of the B-36 was 75.5 tons and the maximum takeoff weight was 186 tons. That allowed it to carry 39 tons of bombs which meant that it could carry the mass equivalent of two empty B-17s, the famous bomber from World War II, or one fully loaded B-17 with nine tons of margin. Its potential bomb load then was greater than the load of the B-52, and that was partly because they didn't know how much they could miniaturize nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons at the time were rather large. This was from the early 50s, and so the nuclear weapons tend to be getting larger and larger, so a heavy bomb load seemed preferable. There you see the little turret on the back there. I believe that one was remote controlled, I'm not entirely sure. And there might have been other turrets on the B-36 as well. But I didn't uh, get a good look at the placement on those. Uh, there I turned off the turbojets and oftentimes they wouldn't be used uh, for cruising because of course uh, they're less efficient than the propeller engines. There were a lot of problems with the B-36. It used a lot of oil. Uh, these Wasp major engines with all their cylinders, it took a lot to cool them and that meant lots of oil. Also, every time they had to do engine overhauls or fixes, you're talking about 336 spark plugs. 336 between the six engines. So that was a lot. 
Uh, it couldn't fit in most hangars, but uh, that, that was sort of the least of their problems. Uh, for instance, while its slogan was six turning, four burning, referring to the six propeller engines and the four jet engines, crews noted that it was more like two turning, two burning, two smoking, two choking, and two more unaccounted for. Uh, the engines had an interesting propensity to catch on fire in freezing weather. Sort of odd, but uh, the reason for this was that the engine was originally designed to be forward mounted. So the pusher configuration that we have here meant that the carburetor was mounted on the wrong side of the engine and tended to get icing. Usually the heat from the engine would heat up the carburetor. And so that led to an increase in the richness of the fuel mixture and that led to unburned fuel in the exhaust and unburned fuel in the exhaust led to engine fire. This actually led to the first nuclear weapon loss in history in 1950 when a B-36 crashed in British Columbia. Its flight plan didn't include going into Canadian aerospace, but it was taking off from Montana in negative 40 degree temperature. That's negative 40 degrees in both Celsius and Fahrenheit, by the way, it's conveniently the same in both. Uh, so that's ridiculous. And that, of course, resulted in engine fire because the carburetor was iced over and that led the B-36 carrying a nuclear weapon to crash in Canada. In the grand scheme of things, the B-36 didn't last very long. It had its first flight in 1946, basically right after the war, one year after World War II ended. Uh, it was operational in 1949, and it was retired in 1959, so about 10 years. It was only produced up to 1954. After that, it was replaced by the B-52, beginning in 1955. And of course, the B-52 has had a much longer life as a strategic bomber. It's notable, though, as sort of a transition plane. After all, it's got the propellers and the jets. And a lot of experimentation occurred with the B-36. It even had experimental tracked landing gear, little uh, treads instead of the usual landing gear. And of course, the single wheel landing gear. And they had a lot more turrets in the earlier models than they did ultimately because after a while there was the start of the use of air-to-air -air missiles and the whole idea of using gun turrets wasn't very effective. It also had a parasite fighter, uh, the XF-85 Goblin, uh, for a while. Given this, there were a lot of variants of the B-36 even though it lasted only 10 to 13 years. Uh, it got up to B-36J3, uh, and those were the last 14 of them made. So it went through B-36A through J, and of course the NB-36H, the nuclear one. So again, a lot of experimentation with this particular bomber before they got the one that they stuck with, the B-52. And here we go for landing, uh, much faster than it probably should be, and I bounce a bit there. And I think we've got it there. Our pre-applied brakes, I did have flaps down. And yeah, the, the cockpit is a little bit awkward there, but it was the best match for the unique shape of the B-36 cockpit, which looks different than the XB-36 cockpit. The XB-36, the prototype, looks more like the B-29. But here, I actually reversed the propellers. I'm not entirely sure they would have done this but I reversed the propellers in order to back up and uh, I decided to try and taxi it to the hangar. And once again, it is a little bit bigger than it ought to be. Uh, I, I wouldn't say the wing would have uh, fit within the confines of the runway anyway. I don't think so. But, uh, and I think even with the precise dimensions, it would be tough in the space plane hangar to contain the whole thing. A bit wobbly there on the landing gear, but I managed to control it. So there you have it, the B-36. It had the correct performance on the propellers. It seemed to be going at 250 miles an hour roughly, and not more than that in level flight. And so I was pretty satisfied. I didn't get it up to 400 miles an hour with the jets, I think. It got close enough. I have not tried it at full cruising altitude or testing its range because it takes a long time for it to climb 
and I don't have that kind of patience, certainly not for the full range flight. But anyway, there you have it, the B-36. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.